Hello and welcome to Mission Nonprofit. I'm your host, Robert Cam. On Mission Nonprofit, we feature a local nonprofit organization from the Thurston County area. And this month, we have Olympia Community School. And with me to talk about Olympia Community School is Teresa Eckstein and Holly Lawrenson. Is that, did I get your name pronounced? Lawrenson. Lawrenson, okay. And, uh, and Teresa, you're the enrollment coordinator, and Holly, mm -hmm. you're the operations coordinator. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to start out with uh, how did Olympia community, first of all, let's, let's talk about what Olympia Community School is, okay? So it is a uh, private school, a private yes. grade school, correct? Yes. For what grades? We have um, pre-K or two-year kindergarten through fifth grades. Okay. Yeah, and we are an independent school, so we're a secular school in Olympia. Okay, so it's a non-religious private grade school. Yes. And it's out at Evergreen. We were at the Evergreen State College. So we were oh. created by Evergreen staff and faculty in 1973. And so that we're celebrating our 40th year this year. We're in our 40th year. Um, and it was created as an alternative to public school by some staff and faculty at Evergreen who were interested in um, carrying forward their theme-based learning, interdisciplinary learning, collaborative, non-competitive style um, into uh, elementary school for their kids. For the people at Evergreen, for the... That's how it was originally started. And then it became a community school where they opened. Um, when they opened, they were including other people in the community as well. But it started with folks at Evergreen with sort of that same philosophy. Now, it's not at Evergreen? We are not. Now, where are you now? I was thinking yeah. you were at Evergreen still. For the past three years, we outgrew oh, okay. that space. We had the Gooey Duck House, which was out on the beach at Evergreen, which was beautiful, um, but also small. And so we outgrew that space and there were um, a lot of renovations that needed to happen that the college um, wasn't going to put money into because um, we weren't a long-term tenant. Um, so now we lease space from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church over by Olympia High School. They have an education wing that we lease um, some beautiful classrooms and have a gym and outdoor play space there. Nice. Do you get to share some of the facilities of Olympia High School at all? Or no? Um, we haven't. No? no. Okay. So. I guess this is a good time to talk about uh, the history of OCS. I guess we can call it OCS. Do you go by OCS sometimes? We do. We do Olympia go by Community OCS. School. It's yeah. A easier yeah. to say. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's talk about. Uh, you, you mentioned it, it got started at Evergreen, correct? By the uh, uh -huh. the faculty. Faculty and staff mm -hmm. at Evergreen. Faculty and staff. Yeah. And uh, so what's been going on for the, that was 1974? 1973. 1973. Yeah. Okay, tell us what, what, what's been going on yeah. since 1973. How yeah. did it become uh, what it is today? And I know yeah. you've grown. Yeah. Yeah, so we've, we've sh kept these core values. So it was a kindergarten through third grade school. Um, with that focus, like I said, on thematic learning, um, on interdisciplinary learning, multi-age classrooms, so kids get to learn from each other in that model. Um, it's been housed in many different places, church basements, um, but we were in the Gooey Duck House for over 20 years at Evergreen, um, and then the past three years have been here. Um, two years ago, we added fifth grade, so we added fourth grade a few years ago and then um, are going up to fifth grade, and we graduated our first fifth grader last year and have a small group of kids that are in fifth grade this year, so we have expanded and grown. Mm -hmm. um, but really kept that small class size. So we have up to 14 kids in a class is usually as, as high as we go um, so that the kids really get that opportunity to learn with the teachers. And, um, and we've maintained that connection to Evergreen. Um, our teachers have all attended Evergreen. Two of them have their masters in teaching mm -hmm. from the college. And we have work study students and interns that come from the college as well. Okay, and Holly, yeah. do you work with the uh, work study students from Evergreen? I do. Can yes. you tell me about uh, what it's like to work with them and, and how um, that grant uh, works out to get you uh, the work study grant? Sure, yeah. Um, we use the federal work study program, which is a grant uh, that allows us to hire part time students from the college and get reimbursed for the wages that we pay them. So we end up not having to pay money for these amazing students to come in and help. And it really allows us to keep the education individualized. Uh, they help during math and reading time specifically. 
And so we're able to bring them in and that allows the teachers to have small group settings where they can focus um, on individualizing the education for each child and be able to um, have small groups learning. I wouldn't imagine you have them for all day though because they no. are students. Yes. So you get them for part of the day mm -hmm. and, uh, and they come in there and they help out with the kids. and. Yeah, uh, so they come in in the mornings typically. We have um, our math and our reading time and language arts times happen in the morning. And so typically they're there during that nine to noon time frame. Um, and they're allowed to work up to 19 hours a week. So we have five right now. We have five different students and they, they, some of them only come in one day a week and others come in two or three days a week, depending on their schedules. Is, is that about work out for one for each classroom or? We try to have one a day for each classroom. Uh, sometimes that doesn't happen. We also utilize parent volunteers to come in in the classroom as well. So what we can't fill with the work studies, um, our parents come in and help in the classrooms to help keep that small group setting. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you have parents helping out with other things too, am I right? Yes. What, what, what kind of things do the, the parents help you out with? Field trips? Mm -hmm. uh, so we ask each of our families to volunteer 65 hours a year as part of their commitment to the school when they enroll. And it allows them to be really involved in their child's education and to be hands-on and know what's happening in the school, which I think our parents appreciate. And um, so they have several different ways that they can volunteer. We try to use each family's unique skill sets to, to find a good fit for that. Some volunteer by serving on the board. Um, others volunteer by coming in during class time and helping out during language arts or math or reading or lunch monitoring, uh, going on field trips. Some come in and do, we have Friday workshops where parents can come in and teach the kids a different craft or an art project or a language or dancing or any type of skill that they want to share with the students. So if my kids went there, then I could volunteer and teach them television. You absolutely yeah. could. <laughs> Well, that sounds neat. I'm glad that the parents kind of have that flexibility and freedom to do what yeah. they want to help out, right? You mm -hmm. mentioned the board. Can mm -hmm. you tell me about uh, how the board of directors works? Because you are a nonprofit, mm -hmm. and uh, you have a board of directors, and uh, so a lot of those are volunteer parents doing that. Do you have other board members as well? We Sometimes we have alumni parents who serve on the board. Um, I'm not sure if community members, in the two years I've been there, we haven't had any. We haven't in the past several years that I've been there either. Had had, community members. Yeah. But we often have one or two alumni parents who return to serve on the board after their kids have graduated mm -hmm. from the school um, and give back in that way. And the board kind of governs the operational functioning of the school and they help maintain the the mission of trying to of providing quality elementary education for students that really focuses on um, creating the love of learning and instilling that in our kids. And so um, we have an executive committee and then there's other uh, spots on the board that help with fundraising and um, other areas. How big is this board of directors? 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 10 is the maximum. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you have a president, you have a vice mm -hmm. president and all that. Yeah. Okay. Holly's the vice president of our board right oh, now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm you can be on staff and be a member of the board. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. We have, um, so we have four positions within our school that are parent jobs for reduced tuition. And that is enrollment coordinator, operations coordinator, volunteer coordinator, and a permanent lunch monitor throughout the year. And that helps us to um, maintain the operational capacity of the school smoothly mm -hmm. so that then we can utilize the extra volunteer hours from families to fill in where they're needed. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that's unique about our school is um, to keep tuition low and be um, accessible to more people in the community as we do have these parent jobs that Holly and I both have um, of enrollment coordinator and operations coordinator where we 
um, do these jobs as volunteer, um, but get a reduced tuition. So our only paid staff, actual paid staff, are mm -hmm. the teachers who carry out our mission. And so the teachers are the educators, certified um, instructors, and everyone else is, is a volunteer. Or... So you guys are volunteering. Mm -hmm. We are. Well, that's fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad that uh, the, the children have, you know, that, uh, that uh, teacher to student ratio that's mm -hmm. that's low I guess is the, yeah. I guess we want to say it's a low ratio mm -hmm. is that right or is mm -hmm. it a high mm -hmm. ratio it's a low ratio uh -huh. and uh, and so that they get better um, you know uh, teaching so uh, these these students probably you know stay with t they, they stay uh, with the same students through their whole um, you know grade school, experience yeah, yeah. And, and they meet in, in kindergarten and they go through kindergarten for two years and then they're in first grade together and second grade yeah and there's only uh, 15 so or, yeah. or roughly around yeah. there on yeah. average mm -hmm. a total of 33 in the school right now oh, so really? we have three classes so we have three teachers and we have the two-year kindergarten first second combined grades and third through fifth combined and so it's part of the uh, methodologies to have the combined grades so kids are, have a lot more flexibility in where they're at so there's a little bit less focus on what grade they're in as where they as individual learners are mm -hmm. so somebody who's in first grade might be um, working at a second grade in a traditional school second grade level in, in math um, and maybe still at the beginning first grade in reading and the teachers because they develop their own curriculum are able to meet those individual needs in the classroom and kids help teach each other so um, so they work in small groups mm -hmm. so for instance a teacher might introduce a concept in math to the whole group and then they will break out into groups and work in small groups for a math game to learn that math concept. Um, and they might work with kids at their same level or they might work with kids at varying levels so they can help each other. And it really helps them um, with their learning. It's a different style of learning to teach other kids. And sometimes kids learn differently from each other. So we've had a lot of success with that multi-age classroom uh, and I with see. the kids learning, yeah. One of the other things that Holly mentioned about field trips, um, mm -hmm. some of the things that we do are um, the core studies in the mornings. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a theme, though, that the teachers developing their curriculum work with the kids to find a theme that the kids that incorporate some things. Um, so right now they're doing a time machine. And so all the kids got to have input into what they wanted to learn. And the teachers compiled all of that and came up with this time machine idea. And so right now they're at the end of the 1800s. Yeah, so the kids are loving that, and they'll learn, they'll incorporate science and math and um, Sounds like that's a lot of history studies. right there. Yeah, and the history, history uh-huh, right? and social studies, and they usually end with a feast for whatever period they're in or whatever Ooh, location. Fun. Yeah, so they have a lot of fun with that learning, mm -hmm. and um, then on Fridays are our experiential learning day. And so the teachers um, will have the workshops, like Holly mentioned, where parents can come in and do a workshop. And if there's something related to the theme that the parents know, they could offer that. Um, also, the kids do workshops on Friday oh, mornings. Really? Yeah, and they the love- The older kids or all, all. of them? Oh, okay. So kindergartners might be teaching their friends something <laughs> really cute, like um, paper dolls. Um, that's cute. Yeah, and older kids might be doing something a little more involved where they're teaching their friends um, a knitting technique and the kids get to sign up for both so they get that experience of, of being more formal teachers um, and the adults you know get a chance to come in but the field trips that we have are also on Fridays so every other Friday um, the kids go out um, either for a community service event or um, another field trip Holly do you want to talk more about field trips? some of those sure I'm sure, sure yeah. the audience would love to hear about that that sounds interesting yeah, our themes allow for interesting field trips. Um, you get to go back in time since you're talking yeah, about Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so oftentimes the teachers will take the theme and they'll try to search for things in the community or the area mm -hmm. that relate to that. Um, sometimes it's not theme related. We went out to the Nisqually um, 
reach. Mm -hmm. I always want to say refuge, but it's the reach. Mm -hmm. uh, and had a tour out there with the kids where they got to do a count of different sea animals and learn about, about sea life. Um, mm -hmm. We have gone up to the Washington State History Museum up in Tacoma yeah. and toured that before. Um, it's it's really we don't have a busing system, so I was going to ask. So yeah, it's very much there? carpooling, carpooling. Mm -hmm. uh, with parents volunteering mm -hmm. to drive and mm -hmm. signing up to take children. And it's and it's also with our workshops and our field trips. It's a great way to incorporate the community. Um, bringing in people who know specific things. Last year we had a scuba diver come in and teach about scuba diving. We had, they were in India studying and someone who had visited India came and brought a lot of artifacts and taught about traditional Indian dress. Um, they studied Australia and someone came in and played the didgeridoo for them and mm -hmm. talked about Australia. So it's a way to really pull skills from people who, who have specific skill sets that are unique to those themes or what we're learning at the time. And we also incorporate community service like Teresa mm -hmm. was mentioning. So one Friday a month, the students all take the bus down to the food bank. And they work the at the bus. food bank. Yes, the city mm -hmm. bus, to right. clarify. Yeah. They take the city bus down to the food bank and um, they spend the afternoon volunteering there and stocking boxes for families to give out at the food bank. Oh, that's good. Which is something that they get very excited about and we also do a collection to take to the food bank every Friday that they go. So we collect food to bring to the food bank and they give that to the food bank and then they, they work there as well. Excellent. Yeah. The community service part. I, I should uh, mention your website. Mm which is uh, www.olympiacommunityschool.org mm -hmm. so that people can go to their website and, and they can learn more about that. And, and there may be people out there watching that have kids that mm -hmm. are, uh, you know, between kindergarten and fifth grade that mm -hmm. are interested in your school. Mm -hmm. What would they do to get their child involved? Mm. So they could come. Um, we have an annual open house and we have some other events, but going to the website to see what's coming up. Um, they could also email us. It's just info, I-N-F-O, at olympiacommunityschool.org. Mm -hmm. um, the phone number is on the website as well. Mm -hmm. And we'd be happy to set people up with a tour, um, to invite them to one of the events and provide more information about that. Mm -hmm. um, we have a pretty standard um, application process for people to sign up. And as we mentioned, we have parent jobs so that we are accessible to people. We also have needs-based reduced tuition for folks. Um, so if tuition is a is a, a um, concern, mm -hmm. yeah, then we really try to meet needs of folks in the community. But also being that um, that's our fund source mm -hmm. is tuition, we do have that. So it is uh, primarily tuition. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't... I mean, I'm sure you could probably accept donations, you know, mm -hmm. if people were donating, um, and they could probably just contact you, go on the website. If they're out there mm -hmm. watching, some, yeah. uh, you know, benefactors out there watching and they want to give you some money, then they can just go to the website. Yes. Uh, Olympiacommunityschool.org. But um, most of it, uh, I guess the largest percentage is the tuition, mm -hmm. and then you've got the work-study grant for uh, mm -hmm. the extra help with the, uh, the college students. Mm -hmm. Are there any other sources of funding? We do have a couple fun events. Do you want to? Yeah. Fundraisers uh, then, it sounds we like. We do. Fun we have raisers. fundraisers. Uh -huh. We call them friend raisers okay. or fundraisers. Um, we have two main ones during the year, and the first happens in the fall, and it's our annual night walk, mm -hmm. which happens around Halloween time, and it's sort of a celebration of the changing of seasons and the fall season, um, which is a great community event that's open to the public, and we usually find an area that's sort of out in the woods, and we have fun crafts and games and music and entertainment, and then the kids get to go on a night walk through, it, it that happens after dark, and um, there's fun, magical little vignettes in the woods, and you get to watch these magical plays. Sometimes they're fairies or, um, Mm -hmm. Or we had a puppet puppeteer this year who mm -hmm. did a little puppet show, and mm -hmm. it's it's a really really fun magical event. And I would say that it's probably the most talked about with our students yeah. <laughs> yeah. As when they talk about the end of the year. What they love the most um, is that. 
It's also a nice alternative to a candy focused mm -hmm. event because it is about just sort of the magic of the season. Mm -hmm. And we include some local groups like the Olympia High School yes. um, um, Drama Club. Um, mm -hmm. they'll, the, some of the kids from that group will come. Usually one or two of the vignettes, the little plays mm -hmm. will be Olympia High School. Olympia Family Theater has participated in the past yeah. too. So it's a really nice community connection to that. Yeah, so that's a, that is a fundraiser. There is a charge to get in, um, mm -hmm. but it, it's also a great way for families to learn about OCS and to see what we're about. Mm -hmm. um, I think the event itself is really representative of our school. And then in the spring, which we're gearing up for now, we have an annual uh, dinner and auction that's called our food event, the Friends of OCS Dinner. And that is an adult-only dinner and auction, and we offer childcare on site. And it's, um, it's, a, it's a great time for the community to come together and really kind of it, alumni to come and reminisce and to, to see old classmates or to see their teachers. Um, and to reconnect, and it's just, it's a really fun event. Mm -hmm. Do you have the date for that? It's yeah. March 16th. March 16th, And all okay. the info is on our website right yeah. now. There's um, olympiacommunityschool.org. You can purchase tickets online. Mm -hmm. And everybody's welcome to that. Yeah. You yes. have to have yeah. a, a child in school. Yeah. Same thing with the fall event, yes. which is called again, what was that called, the fall event? Um, you call it Harvest Festival. It's called, the night walk. Uh -huh. Night walk. Yeah. yeah, it is kind of a Halloween-based thing, but yeah, more it's yeah. All Hallows Eve. Night well, walk. and we've incorporated. Yeah, we've incorporated All Hallows Eve and the Celtic Sawen okay. um, into one. That's why we were hesitating on the it name. I think okay. next year it's just going to be called so the night walk. So you may change it. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 It's good. Right now it's the night walk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's oh, definitely, it sounds fun though. It's whatever really it is, fun. It sounds, whatever it's called, it sounds fun. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, and all that our information for our events is always posted on our website. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to be put on an email mailing list, you could email too to get your name put on a list to get mm -hmm. information ahead of time about when those events are. We also have a couple of smaller fundraisers. Um, this year we're going to work with the Olympia Family Theater to do a fundraiser at the end of the year where we're... Uh, buying out uh, tickets to a play and then selling them and some part of the oh. proceeds will go to our school mm -hmm. and we're also working with Italia uh, mm -hmm. Restaurant yeah. to do a fundraising evening mm -hmm. Which is actually happening next week. Mm -hmm. I don't think this will be on no. air okay. in time for that, but okay. they may be watching for the uh, March 16th uh, Dinner and auction. Great, and it's a so. silent auction, and mm -hmm. we have music and really great um, organic, locally, um, locally purchased food. Mm -hmm. um, that um, so it's a really nice dinner and, and just yeah. sort of evening out. Yeah. Two of our parents actually are cooking the meal. <laughs> They're chefs. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, the assessment of the of the kids? Mm -hmm. I, they probably have to take the wassail. No, they don't have to. No, okay. so that's a, that's a really good, yeah. really good question. Um, it's something that is very different about us, and yeah. and in the evergreen tradition, also we don't have grades, so the assessment is individualized assessment, and we have something that we use that's a continua, and so it's a progress report that's individualized to each child and when they've achieved specific. Um, so for instance, in reading, they might have achieved a certain type of reading skill. And so they work with the child to identify that, the teachers do. And so they keep that continue with them um, all the way through fifth grade. So you get to meet with the teachers a couple times a year or more frequently, um, if, if that's something that you desire, to look at where your child is individually um, on that continuous. So we don't have any standardized testing. Um, all of the assessments are individualized, so the teacher mm -hmm. will sit with the child and read to assess where they are with reading. They'll observe their math, um, and they, the kids did ask for spelling tests because it's something that they were interested in rather than just using the spelling assessment that the teachers have. So there are kids um, in the classrooms who do spelling tests, but I think that's the only type of testing that, that we have at But I point. would imagine with, you know, the the better student-to-teacher ratio than in the public schools, then they're probably going to come out 
of uh, OCS mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more advanced than, than mm -hmm. public school. Yeah, a lot students. of the kids who, who leave um, go on and, and because they have had so much individualized attention. And also there's so much focus on how that child learns herself or himself. Um, they're really confident with that. And because the academics have been adjusted so much um, within the curriculum to how that child learns, they come out as really self-confident learners and um, transition into public school or to Nova or one of the other um, private middle schools really well. Okay, that's good. Well, I think we have to wrap it up for today. Oh. And uh, But I want to mention the website again, which is uh, www.olympiacommunityschool.org. So go there if you're interested in learning more about OCS. And thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you. Uh, thank so you. Uh, good luck with your school. And uh, thanks for watching Mission Nonprofit. Um, we will see you next month. And uh, our guest is going to be Empowerment. So tune in for Mission Nonprofit next month. I'm your host, Robert Cam. Thanks for watching. <laughs>